This is week two of me racing in VR in Le Mans Ultimate, and I have to say, I am loving it. I've spent the week tweaking my graphics settings, whether that's in game or on the desktop, just trying to elicit a little bit more performance and a little bit more of that eye candy. I should say though, that inside the car, the graphics are unbelievably good. They're possibly as good as, if not better than what you have in Automobilista 2. That's inside the car. That Alcantara dash looks like you could reach out and stroke it. Outside the car, I'm still working hard to try and get a visual experience that is really pristine. I have to say though, I've spent the week watching a lot of iRacing on YouTube and Twitch. And the more I watch that, the more I appreciate that maybe I've done Le Mans Ultimate dirty. Because compared to iRacing, even in this interim VR state, it definitely looks better. Well, the colors look better. They're less flat. But anyway, back to this week's racing. Last week, it was Portimao in the Algarve. This week, it is Sebring. And I was struggling. The first three or four races that I tried, for some reason, I was a second, two seconds, maybe even three seconds at some point of the pace. I just couldn't understand it. In a straight line, cars were just driving away from me. And I was starting to feel, well, frustrated. Because you see, Sebring has always been one of those tracks that I have excelled at. Now, when I say excelled, I don't mean as an alien. I mean as a normal racer. It's a track where I would say I can get into the top 5% and race comfortably. However, that wasn't happening. At first, I put it down to having a cold. Maybe my head was foggy. Maybe my reflexes were off. Maybe that's what it was, but I just couldn't get comfortable. I couldn't get the pace. And so I started overdriving. I tried adjusting my brake balance. Maybe I wasn't trail braking well enough. And it was at that point that a light bulb came on in my head. I thought, why are the cars driving away from me in a straight line? So even though I was perfectly fine last week at the Algarve, I went and had a look in the Fanatec game controller on my desktop. And wouldn't you know it, I had 3% trail braking permanently applied because my dead zone has slipped. Once I reset it, went back into the game, all of a sudden I found those two to 2.5 seconds. And as you can see in this race, got right on the pace. And with that distraction out of the way, I was able to give Le Mans Ultimate in VR another assessment. Last week, I was running 25 Hertz as an experiment. There, I said I'd say it one more time. This week, I've changed it back to my default 60 Hertz. That's in game. What I've also done, and I don't think it's making any difference, I really don't think it's paying any attention to it, is I've gone into my settings any file and I've tried to manually set it to 75 Hertz, which is what I'm running the Big Screen Beyond VR headset at. Again, I don't think that Le Mans Ultimate is paying any attention to that, but you know, placebos. I'm still getting stutters. I can't get rid of those. I'm assuming that they will, well, I'm hoping that they will go once we get the official VR release. That is, as long as the drama going on with Motorsports Games and Studio 397 being caught up in that doesn't cause us to have any delays with updates and releases for Le Mans Ultimate. Anyway, let's not talk about that. So I'm still getting stutters. However, Sebring must be the bumpiest circuit I've ever driven on in any sim. Now I know that ACC is bumpy, but seriously, I don't know what it's like in 2D for you 2D racers, 
but in VR, it's almost like we're in one of the porpoising 2024 Formula One cars. So some of the stuttering gets lost in the car bouncing across the circuit. I'm going to have to do a Le Mans Ultimate versus ACC versus Automobilista 2 or maybe just a Le Mans Ultimate versus Automobilista 2 so we can compare the LMDHs and the hypercars and see what the circuits and cars look like across the two sims. Again, the more time I spend in the VR in Le Mans Ultimate, the more it's growing on me. Again, it's still, it's not perfect, it still needs tweaking. Graphically, as I said, in VR, inside the car, it is amazing, it's beautiful. Outside the car, it's still a little bit lacking. However, again, watching iRacing, I have to take it back a notch and say that perhaps Le Mans Ultimate, outside the window, isn't as bad as it perhaps looked to me last week. That was because I had recency bias, because I've spent the last few months in ACC with its Unreal 4 engine. And even though that has issues in VR, it's still a beautiful sight to behold. When you consider that the other sim I've spent most of my time in is a set of Corsa with the custom shaders patch, which just looks pristine in VR, it's Therefore, not really surprising that compared to those benchmarks, Le Mans Ultimate in an unfinished iteration of virtual reality doesn't look as good. So, because the racing is so good in Le Mans Ultimate, because the tactile feedback is so intuitive, allowing you to push the car to the edge and, as you can see, race hard. The visual element of Le Mans Ultimate in VR kind of takes a back seat. I'm not that bothered about it. The facts I can get into the game, it doesn't make my eyes bleed as I said in last week's video. It may have its stutters, but the racing is unbelievably good. Now when I say unbelievably good, I'm not saying that the caliber of racers is unbelievably good across the board, but when you get into a lobby with good racers who don't run you off the track, who are somewhat patient, you can have some of the best racing online. Well, let's just leave it there. Punctuate it. Some of the best racing online. This race that you're currently watching is I think my fifth race of the weekend and it was the best. The race after this is the one that I actually won and it's the race where my safety rating finally went from bronze to silver allowing me to now jump into the hypercars in the weekly races and to participate in the special events. However, this race is the one where I had the biggest smile on my face once I crossed the finish line and took the checkered flag. So let me shut up, let you sit back, enjoy the action. If you wouldn't mind liking, sharing and subscribing, I would really appreciate it. And jump into the comments, let me know what you think. Let me know if you too are a VR racer and have been able to now jump into the Le Mans Ultimate Online lobbies. Let me know what you think about the quality of this video. Does the stuttering really jump out to you as well? Or is it something that you can perhaps squint at and not notice? Let me know what you'd like to see in the next video as well. Do you want to see more of the daily races? Perhaps I should jump into the hypercars or perhaps I should do some offline and see what that looks like with a full grid of cars. Or maybe you want me to jump back into a set of Corsa Competizione or a set of Corsa. I won't be jumping into iRacing. Don't ask me for that. But anyway, as I promised, shutting up. I'll see you at the end of the video and then I'll see you in the next one.
flag in sector three.
ago after 25 minutes of hard and fraught racing another podium thank you for watching again thank you for any subscriptions shares likes and comments i will see you in the next video